we're going to continue speaking about last week's subject when we start talking about Mary and Joseph. We had spoken about why God chose Mary. We spoke specifically to women about her last week. And today, we're going to speak about Joseph. And here's a great lesson for men and women also. Now, the Bible says like this. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being what? Being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. So, let's watch this video very quickly that shows this clip from the soap opera Jesus. Joseph. Yes? Can I help you? In fact, I came to help you. To help me? Do we know each other? You are Joseph of David's lineage. The one who was chosen by God for a very special mission. Who are you? Gabriel. The same one who spoke to your fiance, Mary. An angel. Joseph, do not be afraid to take her as your wife. Mary remains pure. The child in her womb was conceived by the Holy Spirit. This is to fulfill what was said by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and he will save his people from their sins. His name is Jesus. Mary! For you to understand what just happened there, you need to have some context. What was going on in Joseph's mind? Imagine it today, in the 21st century. You can imagine if you, a man, were engaged and about to get married, but all of a sudden, the fiancé you have never been intimate with, who says to be a virgin, suddenly says she became pregnant. And that it was an angel who told her. God. That she was going to have a son. What would you do? So, today, you would be really worried. Imagine, 2,000 years ago, when a woman, by Mosaic law, if she betrayed her fiancé, not only could he leave her, but also stone her, as were the case of many women. They dragged Jesus, caught in adultery. So, Mary, 
because of what had happened to her, she wasn't married yet. She was betrothed. So she suddenly appears pregnant. So society would obviously know that she was not married and got pregnant. She must have betrayed Joseph. And Joseph had not slept with her. Or either both of them must have fallen into sin. What does this mean? What did Joseph think about doing? If he would expose the situation, he would be the first witness acknowledging she had committed adultery. So, by law, she had to be killed, stoned to death. Joseph, instead of doing this, what did he plan on doing based on the text we have read? He was planning on leaving her secretly. What do you mean, leave her secretly? He did not want to give her a bad reputation, to accuse her of having cheated on him, committed adultery, So, what was the solution he came up with? I'm going to flee the scene. I'm going to take upon myself the blame, the responsibility, as if I were the irresponsible one who abandoned her, who impregnated her and then left her. Basically, a man with a bad character. He was planning for all the blame of the supposed adultery would fall on him. And since he would not be there as a witness to throw the first stone to accuse her, she would live and have the child, She, but she wouldn't have to die. So Joseph's attitude was not of pain of wanting to flee the sinking ship, he was planning on taking on the blame in order not to have anything bad happen to her. Notice what an honorable example from this man. Pay attention to the personal sacrifice that he planned on making in order to spare the woman he loved. In order for him not to do this, the angel had to appear, as we read and watched, so that he would understand that something was about to happen and he would need to do as he had planned. This meant losing the love of his life, taking on the blame, a bad reputation, because of his future wife, sparing her. And this teaches us a lesson. Joseph's attitude teaches us a lesson that all men should take and practice within their marriage. One of the main functions of a husband, a man, is to give his own life for his wife to protect, guard, and zeal for his beloved wife with his own life. What do you mean, Bishop? A man was always seen within a biblical marriage context as the one who sacrifices on behalf of his wife. That's why Jesus is known as the bridegroom in regards to the church because he sacrificed and died on behalf of the church. Jesus gave his own life so that his bridegroom would live. That's why he's considered the bridegroom. In Ephesians chapter 5, Paul used this parallel to teach how a wife and husband should behave inside of marriage. He says how to treat his wife, to love their wife as Christ loved his church. 
and gave himself for it. He sacrificed his life for her. So the role of the husband, a man, within his home is this role. And notice how lost this notion about men has been lost. If needed, he would mistreat himself and take on the weight, carry the bomb to spare her. You should be willing to do this. This is what the Lord Jesus did for his church. So, this is the example of a man that God chose to marry and fulfill a role of an earthly father to his son Jesus. A man who had such disposition. And you see also how God, he values this role of a man, right? Because he could have not have included just Joseph. He already had chosen Mary. She had already chosen her to, to give birth to Jesus. He didn't need Joseph. He could have also done miracles and taken care of Mary, but he made it a point, and the angel went there to Joseph, spoke to Joseph. You see the importance that God gives to the role of a man. Today, we have a society that many women, they're independent, and they even say I don't that they don't need a man and all, but it didn't change. A woman continues expecting that same role of a man, that role of a husband, that role that's gonna of a person that's going to take care of her, that's going to protect her, that's going to put themselves in the front line, that are going to take initiatives. When God chose Joseph, afterwards we see the story of how it worked. You know, they have to flee to Egypt because they start killing the babies and all. But you see his role, the importance of who he was to Mary. The angel, he he spoke to Joseph again. Look, leave now because they're going to come and kill. Then afterwards when he's in Egypt, then go back because that king already died. Meaning, God, he spoke to Joseph. Many people don't give much importance to the role of Joseph. They always talk about Mary. He considered him a leader. Exactly. Of his house. Exactly. God saw he placed that responsibility in his hands, that great responsibility. You're going to be the figure of a father to this child. You're going to be her husband. You're going to take care of this family. You're going to protect this family because I have a great plan through this child. Sorry to interrupt you, Christiane. I just wanted to emphasize a point you made in the beginning that someone may have not noticed. Christiane said something very strong. Notice that God did not need Mary to get married in order to have Jesus. Do you agree? Yes or no? Because she conceived through the Holy Spirit. She got pregnant without Joseph. So, God did not need Mary to have a husband to give birth to Jesus. But, he made a point to call Joseph and reassured him to marry her. He made sure that Joseph would stay in Mary's life not only to fulfill the role of a husband, but also a father for Jesus. And for them to have more children, which they did, so that Jesus would in fact grow up in a family. So, Joseph had the role of a husband and a father. So, if the point was only to give birth to Jesus, Joseph wouldn't be necessary. But God honored the role of Joseph as a father and of, of a husband in the life of Mary. Look at how God honored him. God spoke to Mary once. 
But he spoke to Joseph three times afterwards. He continued using Joseph to take care of the family and Mary. And this shows us how God honors the role of a man today. A role that many women, including celebrities, famous women who say, I want a child, but I don't want a husband. I don't want a father for this child. I'll go to the sperm bank and buy sperm, artificial fertilization, get pregnant and have a child and, oh, I don't need a man. Everyone to their own. But compare this to what God did in regards to Mary. And why do many women think like this? Why do you men hear this so much, hearing women speaking bad about men? And maybe you yourself have already said, well, women don't want that. They don't accept. They want a man that has money and all. But why? Why do we have a society nowadays that most women have this, this, this anger towards men? Because for many years, for many and many years, men didn't know about this value that they had of the family. Until today, many men, they don't behave with this value. They, don't ha they haven't given value to this role that God gave to them as a leader. So the woman, many times, she has to be the leader. She didn't want to, but she has to be. She has to take initiative. She has to resolve things at home. She has to say, don't do this, don't do that. Take care of your health, don't drink. She has to take the initiatives that it, he was supposed to take. So, you see, the man has a very important role in the family as a head, as a leader that God wants to use. But if he doesn't accept this report, if he doesn't take this this um, role and res be responsible for his family, he can't complain when the woman goes and you know starts taking the lead. When the woman has these things inside of her towards them, so we understand what's behind all of this, behind this revolt of many women. We understand, but you who are a man, a man of God. You need to value yourself even in a society that's not going to give you value because, because it's very traumatized with so many relationships that didn't work out. You have to give yourself that value. You have to recognize, no, I'm not just anyone. I'm not just any man. I am, you know, God, he made us after his own image, right? He made a man after his image. The Bible says that a man was created under the image of God and the woman in the image of a man. So the man is so important. He, 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 and the woman knows that she needs a man that recognizes this value that he has to pass it on, to pass on to her this certainty, to give her this protection for her to feel valued and not to feel like she's having to compete with other women. She wants to feel like she's the only one. So many things that happen in a woman's life, insecurities, low self-esteem, um, she wants to keep competing with other women. Many things are actually, you know, what's behind all of that is the insecurity that she has in her love life. When a woman is happy, when she is secure, about her husband, when she feels secure, protected, you know, my husband's going to give his life for me. She doesn't need to, to compare herself with any woman. She doesn't need to be afraid of what's going to happen tomorrow. I know that my husband's going to take care of me. He's going to be with me. He's going to face anything to help me. That, you know, that's the role of the Lord Jesus. He, do, he did and he does until today for the, his church. So if the man would just recognize this and would live this every day of his life, 
you would see that your wife, she is going to change. She's going to start to admire everything that you thought you could only achieve through a credit card. You're going to, to achieve without a credit card, without a new car, without a house before the beach. You're going to be, achieve it because a woman is not that futile woman that many people think she is. But she needs to feel secure. She needs a Joseph, not just a Joe Schmo. Am I right? Because many women, they have a Joe Schmo at their side. A Joe Druggy. A Joe Bar. A Joe WhatsApp or Joe Telegram. Groupie. A Joe Gamer. Just another Joe Schmo of the world. But what she wants is a Joseph. A man who passes this assurance to her. Security and confidence. The Bible says that Joseph, being righteous, did not want to shame her. He was a righteous man. It's important. A husband be righteous. What is a righteous person? A balanced person. If you think about justice, you quickly think about a scale. It's not too much to one side nor to the other. It's balanced. A person is balanced in control of themselves. A woman, as she said, sometimes has to take the lead because if she waits for her husband, not only will he not take the lead, but if she follows him, she'll end up in the wrong place. She's going to get in trouble because her husband is going on paths that are not good for a marriage or a family. That's why there are disparities. It's important for a woman to have an admirable husband, a Joseph in her life. And it's also important to say that sometimes a woman fails in not seeing the qualities of her husband. So we have these two sides. So on one side, we need more men like Joseph. Men who are willing to protect their family fight for their family, fight for their house, fight for their marriage, and not be men who are uncommitted and flee. Leave the women, make a child leave. They, they want to leave when little things rise and go to a bar. No, men who are with her no matter what they'll face. I'm with you and I will fight for you. I will go until the end with you. It's necessary to have more men like this. Men who are more righteous. Men who will give their life for their family. For their house. On the other hand, we also need more women like Mary. Women who admire, respect, and recognize the role of a man and will not humiliate them. Like today, where this is trending. It's normal for women to humiliate a man, saying they don't need them. Because today's many women really don't need a man financially. We are in favor of both growing. A woman doesn't need to be dependent financially on her husband. And also if she does, a real Joseph won't take advantage of this to humiliate or dominate over her. But if she grows financially, sometimes even more than him, this doesn't mean that she has a right to humiliate him and say she doesn't need him. To say he's just a sperm donor. A woman should not treat her husband this way because God did not treat a husband this way, even though he did not need them. God did not need him. God is already a father. God, through the Holy Spirit, was able to have Mary conceive. But God honored Joseph as a husband and as a father for Jesus. So, understand, within a marriage, 
we fulfill to each other the image of God. Christiani, to me, she fulfills the role of the Holy Spirit. The same word is even used in the Bible for the Holy Spirit. He is called. What you many have known is our helper. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is our helper. This word was also used to describe a woman. God said, we will make him a helper to the man. So, the woman within a marriage, she must fulfill the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of her husband. Help, guide, advice. He shares what he'll do, gives a vision. Oh, we can do this way, uh, that way. An intelligent man knows how to listen to his wife. In the same way, the husband fulfills the role of Jesus to his wife, who gave his life for the church. He gives his life for his wife. So there are detailed functions within a marriage. If you want a happy marriage, then you need to learn with a couple that God chose to bring his son here. Learn with Mary, with Joseph. Even if you say, oh, this is very distant from my reality. No, no, it's not. It's not difficult. All you have to do is understand that you need to change some things, your concepts. Instead of accepting the concept of marriage that the world represents, throw it away. These concepts of romantic music and accept the concept from the Word of God. When you change your mindset, you can change your relationship. Change the way you think. So, see yourself and you will change the way you are. And this will make you a better man or a better woman. You will have an exemplary life for others. And if you say, oh, but you don't know the husband that I have. You don't know what I already went through in my relationships. You don't need to do with others what they do with you. You don't need that. You don't need that woman. Because many men, they've already mistreated many women. It doesn't mean that the woman now has to mistreat men. If we want to be justified, we can't make the same mistakes as them. We need to show them that, that we know our value. We know our function. We know our role. We recognize our responsibility, the responsibility that God gave to us. The Holy Spirit, you know, you were saying that the woman, she represents the Holy Spirit. And I was thinking how he... He is amazing because those who have the Holy Spirit know what I'm talking about. He doesn't impose His will. He doesn't force you to do what He wants. You know, things don't have to be His way. He suggests, He speaks, and He speaks in a way that is very calm. He's not rude. He is not rude and aggressive in the way that He speaks. He is nice and caring, and He speaks to us, but He allows us to choose if we want to hear what He wants, what He's saying or not. He's, he's not going to impose. So many women, they lose. In this moment, you, you are right in what you're asking for. But when you impose what you want, you lose reason. You stop being this nice and, and exhilarate to your husband to help, but when you start being a, what can I say, a, a person like those main kings, like a dictator, you know, a dictator, you lose your reason. So many times, 
even married with a person that doesn't understand what we're talking about here, you don't need to lose your reason. You don't need to make the same mistakes that that, as that person. You can be the Mary there. He is not a Joseph yet, but you can be Mary. And you who are single, already start preparing yourself for that, even to choose. Even to choose, could it be that he's the kind of Joseph for me? Learn to, to see the difference instead of you just, you know, following your heart based on what you feel, attraction. See the profile. Is he a Joseph? Is he going to take care of me? Is he going to be a kind of Jesus to me? That's very important.